to determine how much a substance heats up during these stages here where the state isn't changing but the temperature is increasing we use a specific heat capacity the specific heat capacity is the energy needed to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by one kilogram without the change of state in other words it's not going from solid to liquid or anything or liquid to gas or anything like that we're just heating it up so the temperature is increasing okay here's the equation now delta t here so this can be in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. The reason why it doesn't matter in this case because we are determining a change in temperature. So the fact that you have to add 273 or subtract 273 is irrelevant here. Okay, this setup can be used to determine the specific capacity of a solid or a liquid in, in the right hand side case. So what you do is you supply a current to the heater. You write down the current and the voltage and you multiply that together to get the power and then once you've got the power which is IV times that by the time to get the energy so once you've got the energy you can have to also figure out the change in temperature because so you have to measure temperature before and after and of course you'd have to measure the mass of the block or liquid beforehand and then you can use the equation to determine um, the specific capacity because now you have E over M delta t and that will give us a specific capacity and you can do the exact same thing with the liquid here's some examples so water has a really high specific capacity so it means you need 4200 joules for each kilogram to increase the temperature by one kelvin while with mercury you'll need 140 joules per kilogram to heat up by one kelvin so it means that water is hard to heat up but also that it's more more difficult to cool down as well okay this setup can also be used to determine the specific capacity it's called called an inver inversion tube and you have these lead shots over here and then we have a thermometer at the bottom as well to check the initial and final temperature and what you do is you invert it you turn it upside down each time you turn it upside down it falls down by a height of 1.2 zero meters so every time it's falling down it's losing gravitational potential energy which turns into kinetic energy and finally as it hits the bottom it's going to turn to thermal energy which is basically it's going to heat up the lead shots so the lead, lead shot temperature should rise each time you do it in this question you're doing it 50 times so what we can do is we need to figure out the loss in gravitational potential energy so you can do mgh for that so mgh the mass is falling 0 0.45 times 9.81 times the change in height which is 1.2 okay but the thing is you're doing it 50 times so you need to multiply this by 50. so that gives us an energy of 264.87 joules all of this energy we're going to assume is going to heat up the lead shots so we can use a specific capacity equation E equals MC delta T so in this case what you can do is we've got the energy from the previous section and we've got the mass which is 0 0.45 and we've got the temperature change there so we don't have specific capacity we're going to work that out but the temperature change it doesn't matter if it's in kelvin or degrees celsius the change in temperature is still the same so it's still four and okay if you rearrange this and you find c you should get 147 joules per kilogram per kelvin okay what assumption did we make uh, in your calculation so we assumed that when the ball, uh, lead ball fall, all of the energy, the, the energy that's released and the heat that heat that um, it receives doesn't go into the environment. Nothing is dissipated into the environment. So it's because in reality, of course, some of it is going to heat up the cardboard that it's made out of and it's going to be dissipated to the surroundings. Some of it's going to heat the air up and some of it's going to heat the, the thermometer up. We're just ignoring all of that.